my name is Patricia and I'm the Brown Chapter Director here in the North UK, Leeds and Newcastle. We are the world's largest community of start startups, founders, innovators and creators, 600 chapters across the globe, 125 countries and millions of community members. We host thousands of events globally, both in person and uh, in, 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 in that space, virtual space. Um, connecting um, like-minded, diverse entrepreneurs, great speakers. We hosted people like Jessica Livingston from Y Combinator, Bill Morris from Google Ventures, or Gary V. So if you're looking for inspiration to deepen your knowledge and connect with great people, that's the place. So that being said, let me introduce the topic for today's session. We are going to look at how to apply strategy storming and create your startup strategic architecture strategy storming we're thinking and reinventing for smart business with Doyle Bueller. Doyle is an author and entrepreneur runs a strategic digital marketing consultancy creating real-time connected adaptive digital challenger brands. Doyle's been uh, involved in online and e-commerce businesses since 2002 leading one of his e-commerce companies to the top 50 fastest growing companies in Canada and now number one pastors in the province, so that's that's huge. Uh, I hope he, he will tell us how he's done that. He's the author of multiple books on digital strategy, regularly speaks on digital transformation and marketing. So we've got a wealth of knowledge here. Uh, Doyle is also a Canadian Marketing Association Awards Judge and our Australian Business Books Awards Judge. He's based in Australia right now in Sydney, having lived in Canada and many places. His latest book, Breakthrough, has been Amazon number one bestseller book. Breakthrough is for innovators who are ready to transform, evolve, and future-proof their business. So it sounds like startup founders and scale-up founders. Uh, so that's, that's going to be a brilliant session. Doyle, it's uh, great to see you again, because it's not the first time we meet each other. Great to see you again. Thank you for joining us. I know it's late in Australia. So we really appreciate, uh, really delighted um, to have you here. Well, thank you so much, Patricia. Really appreciate um, you changing the time as well to be able to to present. But um, it's yeah, it's been a long day. It's nine p.m. Um, Sydney time. But uh, yeah, super excited to be here and super excited to be able to to share um, strategy storming with you and and the audience as well. So really looking forward to it. Great, great. Well, um, before we begin the session, if you could just, because uh, the floor will be yours in a minute, but before before you do that, could you tell us a bit about your journey so far? I know you had that startup experience, which we mentioned, mm -hmm. and you you know made it big, we, you scaled that. You coached, you mentor coached entrepreneurs. Uh, what made you decide to focus on strategy and what stands behind the chief expedition officer? So could you just very briefly Tell us. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I actually, um, I, I was in uh, the aerospace industry. Um, I used to be a pilot in the Air Force, and I've got some some flight stories, some airplane related stories coming up that I'm going to be talking about. But in 2002, I got my master's in business, and my goal was to build a business of startups, and that's where I I started those e-commerce businesses and expanded them into the U.S. and then uh, from Canada into the U.S. and then into Europe and then into uh, Australia in like 2010, I think it was 2009. And I came here uh, to sell one of the licensees and uh, just loved it. And it's like, well, I'm going to stick around. So I eventually moved there, moved here rather about a year later. But it's been a really exciting journey. And one of the things that I found was the reason why, as you mentioned, we became one of the top 50, 50 fastest growing companies in Canada was that we had a strategy, um, a strategic architecture, as I like to call it as a technical term. But that really kind of gave us the foundation of, of being able to be adaptive and resilient uh, to the market. And we had the huge housing crisis in 2008, 2009, and another you know global recession as well. So we had a lot going against us, but we built a very resilient strategy. And then when I kind of moved out of that e-commerce business into sort of the consulting world, I found and discovered that a lot of businesses weren't really quite prepared for what they were facing in the business world, particularly startups, but also more mature based businesses as well. Um, they didn't necessarily have that strong foundation, that strong strategy to help them uh, be resilient and, you know, 
keep them, give them that foundation to really give them that strength to move forward and, and to be successful as well. Cause ultimately that's what we want. So we want to make sure that, you know, we can instill those, these practices of, of strategic thinking and how we can actually do it. And that's been my mission is, is how do we actually make strategy easier to learn, to think about, to execute, to make sure that it's part of us because like a GPS, we need to be able to understand how to use these pieces and, and how it gets us to our ultimate objective uh, as well. Yeah. And you talked about the expedition officer that that's what we're basically on here is creating an expedition um, you know, some of the great expeditions of the past, the only reason why they were successful was because they were very well prepared, yeah. right? Call it a strategy, call it whatever you want, but they were prepared. The ones that succeeded were the ones who prepared and had a very good, strong battle plan, expeditionary plan, whatever you want to call it. They're the ones who were able to explore, you know, the Arctic and the Antarctic and, and you know, fly around the world and, and that kind of stuff. So we need to kind of build that resiliency into everything that we do every single day. And that's, again, that's what I'm here for. That's what my mission is. Great. Yeah, I love the word expedition. I, have, uh, I often say that you know, business <laughs> is a journey, but expedition sounds much more exciting. Yeah. So, yes, well, the floor is yours. Um, well, thank I'm, you. I'm really looking forward to learning how to prepare for the expedition. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there will be loads of questions. So everyone during the session, the Q&A is there if you, if you just... Uh, um, right two questions there we'll take them uh in the in the last part of the session yeah and i can't as i mentioned i can't see the chat when i go into kind of full screen presentation yeah. mode but um if there is a, a question i'm happy to answer there are a few little workshop sessions as well throughout this mm -hmm. where i'll kind of ask you to to write and so maybe when people are writing if there are questions i can kind of answer them and uh kind of keep things moving as well so um and i'm gonna have to watch the clock too because i don't have a timer on the because yeah don't worry i'll be i'll be i'll be the watchman <laughs> watch lady <Yeah>. okay <laughs> so okay. if we go past two hours is that okay <laughs> and everybody there is a uh, there's a test at the end of this so make sure you take good notes <laughs> oh okay good let's go all right yeah, no. So thanks, everybody, for joining um, in. And I want to talk to you about strategy storming. And basically what we want to be able to do is level up your ability to deal with these these huge factors in the business environment world and that sort of thing. Disruption, volatility, crisis and change. And as we've seen in the last couple of years, that is really part of the the agenda almost every single day is is being able to deal with this uh every single day and being able to manage it and and look it's going to take some time to be able to to adjust and make you know adapt and that sort of thing but as long as we don't get pushed off that objective that we actually want to be able to focus in on and that's the ultimate goal here is how do we actually do this how do we grow a business how do we scale a business despite all the mayhem around us uh, and that sort of thing. And what I've been noticing over the years, I've, I've been in business for like 20 years. Um, anyone can start a business, but you know, who, who can actually finish one? And, and I know startup grind, we're big into startups and all that kind of stuff. But if you take the initial startup and you kind of extend that, where do we, where does that leave us with and where can we actually go with this? And then I've found over the years that a lot of the problems, some of them that I've encountered myself, you know, most entrepreneurs don't know what exactly is stopping them. It's hard to fight an invisible enemy, right? We don't really know, okay, well, what is it? The market shifting? Is it, is it the, um, uh, the economy shifting? Is it how we're doing it? Is it our operations? Is it our offer? Is it our MVP? Whatever the case may be, but we need to be able to see what is actually, actually stopping us in terms of our leverage. Uh, number two, entrepreneurs are running their business without a, without a clear strategy. And I've said this, you know, quite a number of times. Um, and it doesn't mean that you're running a, a silly business or it's not a real business or anything like that. You you know what? You're, you're flying by the seat of your pants and there's a lot of good things about that, right? It's exciting. It's adventurous. Um, you can you can do things here and now and that sort of thing and, and being nimble and being agile and that sort of thing. The problem is, is that we can't necessarily sustain that. So we have to put in place systems and processes and methods to be able to sustain that. And we don't know what levers to use or what actions to take to move the needle with the most or least effort, right? 
and we can't see the obstacles in the way. So we have to really define that strategy and see what it actually is. And a strategy is not like a, a plan that sits on a desk somewhere and it's not, you know, it's just so-called strategic plan. It's not a goal. It's not a to-do list. It's not just your objective. It's a, it's a way, it's the essence of your business. That's how I'm redefining a strategy is. So we're taking it, we're understanding it, that it needs critical pieces, but we need to rethink it. We need to reinvent how we actually see it and how we actually execute it. And there's some tools I'm going to be showing you how to do that. And the third one, the business model is not set up to scale, right? This means every time they try to step on the accelerator, they just stall or their model can't handle the pressure and collapses as well. And we've seen this a lot with startups. So if we build a business model from the beginning, we can really see how we can actually leverage that and what pieces we, we need to be able to, to use that as well. Um, don't lose out because of what you don't know or can't see. Once you have a proven system or foundation, that builds your model and your strategy this does actually does the heavy lifting for you business becomes much easier intuitive and more productive and profitable as well so here's how to become a finisher not just a starter so this is what i call strategy storming a few things we're going to go over today the four things we know right now um, survivorship bias and defining the holes quickening what i call the quickening business life cycles are, are shortening significantly uh, the today and tomorrow matrix the levers this is sort of the meat of it number five the levers the balance and the fulcrum, all related to change, all related to an AMPS model that I called audience method process and, and story uh, and the full fulcrums. And I'll wrap up with another story about uh, the one degree of artfulness from the, the world of aviation as well and a 100 day radar, right? Strategy is great, but it can be much, much greater if we actually put some accountability to it, if we put a clear roadmap, we put a clear radar, we actually articulate what is it actually that we're going to do at the end of this. We want to make sure that we stick around for that. So why are you here? to protect your company and your career, uh, looking for new tools, strategies, and insights, eager to simplify your work and protect your creations, uh, looking for better, more integrated creative solutions as well. Um, and I've got a free gift as well that I want to give out at the end of this to help you build your strategy model that we'll be talking about. So you'll be able to take it out and you'll actually be able to produce it. I'm going to show you a cool little trick uh, for this as well. So what do we know right now? change happens and and we've really sort of seen the acceleration of this in the last couple of years and i'm going to go into this cycle change but right now what we know is that number one everything changes all the time it's uncertain there's a lot of volatility um, but we need to be able to be able to do more so we're tired we're reactive uh, we never seem to be able to finish or accomplish anything as well change is constant uh number two nobody knows the answers right signals from the market are incredibly confusing so it's not clear which what turn to take or what data to trust in absence of clear direction people are afraid to make a decision and then get blamed for it right so we need to be able to see how can we actually understand the question number three old business tools no longer deliver the same results that we had before so most of what we use in business take strategic planning or budgeting or just-in-time management is designed for stable certain market conditions but these conditions do no no longer exist as I'm sure most of you can attest to and then number four the team is exhausted our people are overwhelmed they're doubtful and resistant and product productivity suffers right uh, we cannot be creative and we cannot work effectively across you know our organizational silos as well so amongst all this chaos you know if we can tick the box of these are the things that we do know and it's not necessarily something that we can use but at least if we understand the problem we can start to see some of the solutions as well so what is strategy storming well it's a combination of thinking creating storytelling and word world building right we want to be able to take and and sort of rethink and reimagine that traditional form of of strategy that i'm, I'm sure some of you are, are quite familiar with it and i'm possibly thinking as well that you've seen that it's like, no, I don't want a corporate strategy that kind of puts me in a, in a, a one specific railroad track that I'm not necessarily going to follow. And strategy storming is not at all like that. We want to make sure that we're thinking about how we can see the things differently, how we want to see how we can create new alternatives. We want to talk about divergent and convergent thinking as well do, through storytelling and world building as well. It's ultimately is art artfulness, right? So strategy storming is adding new thinking, reinvention, and gameplay into how we think, create, craft, and build strategies that are robust and resilient, giving us the clarity, certainty, and competencies that we need to know along 
this chaotic pathway. And ultimately, that's really very important here. We're not saying that you have to, you know, relearn or rethink everything or start with a clean slate, so to speak, wipe everything off. We can, you've already have a lot of skills, right? And and you've been in business for whatever, it doesn't really matter one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, you've got a lot of skills. And it's not like you say have to, you know, relearn how to ride a bicycle, you know how to do that, you know, with the the ins and outs of your business, because you've been doing it. But let's take a look at how can we be more clever? How can we be more creative? How can we be more skillful? How can we think more strategically? How can we reduce complex ideas and problems? How can we craft uncommon solutions, embrace this complexity that we all know that we're really quite stuck in? And then how do we comprehend the dynamics of strategy, right? It's not strategy is not something that it's a plan that you stick again on a PowerPoint. Um, you get buy in from everybody created with a committee and away you go. It's not like that at all. It's dynamic. And this is where an architecture comes into place. So how can we start to see strategy differently? Um, you probably heard the term of survivorship bias. Um, we can actually I've got an example here, a little story that I want to show you that actually shows you what that means and how we can actually cause it to think a little bit differently. But basically, it's it's a, called survival bias or a more immortal time bias. And it's concentrating are the things that made it past some selection process and overlooking those that did not because we can't actually see it, see it. And this can lead to incorrect uh, conclusions. As I, as I said at the beginning, we don't always know exactly what questions to ask. So during World War II, um, some of the aircraft were leaving England and flying over to Europe and dropping bombs and all that, you know, crazy stuff. When they were coming back, uh, landing, they, they obviously not all the planes were coming back and landing. Some of them were destroyed and, and damaged and they couldn't make the flight back. But they wanted to try to prevent, you know, or rather uh, create, have more airplanes return uh, from the war zone. So what they did, it seemed pretty logical, is they basically mapped out all the little bullet holes uh, from the aircraft that returned and created a map of the different aircraft. And what they noticed was that, generally speaking, the bullets were around these specific areas on the wing tips, on the tail, and then on the center fuselage and, and that sort of thing, which, which kind of makes sense. So the solution was, at that point, okay, well, let's just put armor on the aircraft to protect the aircraft uh, so that more of them can return, right? Which, which seems pretty logical right the challenge is is that it wasn't where the bullet holes were which was in these positions it's where the bullet holes were not right the bullet there were they couldn't see any and the reason why is because these aircraft didn't return okay the aircraft with bullets holes in the air engine and in the cockpit and in the wing route and in the tail uh, section here those destroyed the aircraft so they could not return but instead we were focusing the solutions on where are these bullets going? But we had to look at where are the bullets not going? What are we not actually looking at as well? And then Abraham Wald came, came up with the solution. It's the armor doesn't go where the bullet holes are. It goes where the bullet holes are not, right? On the engines, on the cockpit, on the wing route, on the tail section as well. So we have to look at how can we actually look at a deeper solution here? The it's not always right in front of us. And we have to be able to extend that into our business to say, okay, what signals are we not seeing? Okay, yes, we're seeing some signals from some customers, from some previous customers, but what are they not telling us? And if you're able to find that out, that gives you the ability to, to see what that strategy can, excuse me, what that strategy can actually do for you. One of the other bigger challenges is, is our focus on today versus tomorrow, right? Are we sacrificing today for tomorrow? And, and a lot of us have our to-do list and that's very, you know, part of the startup cult culture is the, the stand-up meeting and, and all that kind of stuff and your objectives and, and away you go and that sort of thing. But are we sacrificing what we're doing specifically today for tomorrow? And I'd say the answer is yes. And it doesn't mean that there's th that it's one or the other, but we have to be able to look at how do we actually combine today and tomorrow. So if you look at it kind of in this little illustration, today is now, right? It's it's a vertical line. It's the stuff we need to do now. It's the stuff we need to do today. It's our to-do list and it's things that, that are really super important and priority. But if we get focusing too much on this, what happens to tomorrow? 
Do we still have the t today list tomorrow, right? Do we still have the same problems because we're focusing on our today list, on our to-do list? Or if we could actually extract ourselves out and say, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, I need to be able to understand how to solve these problems. Tomorrow, I need to be able to understand how is our strategy going to be changed or how is it going to be pushed off course? And we need to be able to look at these together, not just sacrificing one for the other, but deciding tom tomorrow is as important as today is ultimately what I want to say here. Because if we're dealing with too much tomorrow, then guess what? We're going to be lost and we're not going to be having the, the actual specific execution that we need. And if we focus too much on today, we're going to miss out on what's coming down the pipe. What are, can we anticipate is coming? What can we anticipate to be able to maneuver around it? And a lot of this is, is sort of put in play in terms of what's called the Toto matrix for today, tomorrow matrix. And this is how we can actually use strategy and use ourselves and use our resources as well to be able to, to look at things. And in the startup world, a lot of us hear this term firefighting and, and maybe you know exactly what that means, but if you're not too sure, this is really just a short term fix for a long term pain, right? It's stuff that we do every single day. It seems it's very reactive. It's very defensive. It's just a change that we want to be able to uh, react to. And so there's no long term view of firefighting because when you think about it, what is the ultimate firefighting force? It's not one that's fighting fires every single day. Cause if it's fighting fires every single day, guess what? Your fire prevention sucks. <laughs> so it's kind of uh, counterintuitive, but the fire, the best fire department is a fire department that doesn't do anything. They make dinner and they polish the fire trucks uh, and that sort of thing, because we've created a strategy. We've created that prevention of firefighting. We created that process that prevents us from, from creating fires. So we don't have to deal with firefights. Actually have a proper strategy. Another section here is called the Titanic syndrome. We only see the disaster when it hits us. We all know the story of the Titanic, right? And we've all heard the expression, you know, it, what you're doing in your business is like rearranging uh, deck chairs on the Titanic. It seems pointless, but at that point it's too late. And that's if we're not looking at we're looking yesterday, right? We're not looking at today at all. Blind idealism. This is like the, the perfect startup uh, metaphor. We're very excited. You know, when I was building my startups, very, very excited. It's an exciting time. You're doing a lot of great things, but does that get in the way of how do we actually think about tomorrow and our, our, you know, our, our next audience, our next methodology, our next process, our next, um, economy uh, and that sort of thing. So we need to be able to look at that. And that's where we focus on reinvention, right? Solving today while building up tomorrow. And ultimately, that's what we need to be able to do to build a thriving tomorrow and succeed today as well. So this is where we need to focus on. So we need to be proactive. We need to be deliberate. We need to have an a, a approach to change, which I'm going to show you. We want to be able to balance practical action. We need to have like a, a roadmap, a flight plan. Um, and we need to be able to building systems for reinvention and building your strategy as well. Now, one of the other factors that was uh, two core ones that I've talked about. Um, the next one is the quickening and the cycles of business are shortening. And this is part of the reason why we're, we're very, very exhausted. About seven years ago, from 1900 to 1975, rather, sorry, that was a bit longer, from about 100 years ago, the cycle of business was about seven years. So a half cycle is meaning that there was a change every 35 years. And for those of you in the, the older age group like myself, you know, our grandparents, they basically had one career that lasted like 35 years, and that was what they did. 1975 things started to change the cycle dropped to about 15 years okay so the half cycle of that meaning that every seven and a half years we were seeing a significant change between 1975 and 2005 then in 2005 to 2022 what has happened well guess what the cycle of change has dropped from to six years or a half cycle of three years and what does that actually mean that means that every three years 
We have to reinvent. We have to rethink. We have to reimagine our approach. We have to rethink our tactics. We have to rethink how exactly are we going to get more customers or grow our business or scale our business. And guess what? You need to change. You need to adapt. You need to be able to see these things as they come. Because if you can imagine, if you get off on the wrong point on this curve, you're going down the other side and you're not going to be able to survive as well. So you need to be able to anticipate the changes with a solid strategy with a strong business model as well. And if we see these changes, this is basically the, the delta, the fulcrum that I'm going to be talking about uh, coming up. It's really, really important. We need to be able to see the balance. What, what are these leverage, these, sorry, these points of leverage that we can have, that we can create that are really, really important because these are the battles that we, you know, we face every day. Um, and why do we need them? Well, if you're familiar with a little bit of high school physics, um, the fulcrum and the balance is something that you learn uh, to be able to, to use and, and it, it creates that extra momentum. It, it's able to create that, that extra strength and that extra um, ability to survive as well. So Fritz Heider originated what he called balance theory to show how some people develop their relationships with other people and things in their environment. Balance theory says that if people see a set of cognitive elements as being a system, then they will have a preference to maintain a balanced state amongst these elements, right? So what he's basically saying is that if we see things that need to be balanced, we're actually more prone to being able to balance them, right? If we basically name them, what is it that we need to balance? You actually intuitively begin to understand how do you solve this problem as well. And the insight here is that if you see that, that balance becomes that leverage that you want to be able to do, to use. And I'm going to show you this very, very quickly. So the fulcrum is just as important as the things that you're trying to balance, right? This is the fulcrum here. And this is what we're trying to balance. So what are you trying to balance? Heart versus mind, profit versus freedom, today versus tomorrow, right? I'm going to be asking this more in detail coming up, but start to think about this. What is it that you're trying to balance? A few more examples, art versus science, mission, vision versus mission, uh, audience versus value, speed versus direction, right? So you want to be able to balance because once you decide, that's when you can actually construct your fulcrum, which I'm also going to be showing you uh, coming up very, very quickly. And in this example, it's how do you actually balance speed versus direction? And, and maybe this is a discussion that we can have at the end, but I'd love to What's even in the chat as well. What's more important to your business? Is it right? Do you want to get there or do you want to get there? You know, get there faster than everybody else, or do you want to get there in, in a specific direction and that sort of thing? If we look at it, we need to decide, okay, well, can we actually balance those? And, and yes, we can, right? No direction means that we don't know where we're going. So you wouldn't get there with no speed and no speed means we will never get there even if you know where we're going. So we need to be able to balance both of these factors simultaneously and an effective strategy balances these factors as a fulcrum. So is it, is it the speed that you want to get to or is it the direction that that's more important as well? And then this becomes your fulcrum. And in this case, one of the models that I'm going to show you uses the fulcrum of clarity, certainty, and competency. And I'm going to show you how these all fit together. So I'd love to hear in the chat, you know, what's more important, speed or direction, or can we have both simultaneously as well? So here's a quick little worksheet um, just to kind of get your, your brains gearing, even if it is a bit early over in your part of the world. Um, but what two items are you trying to balance in your business? And I had a few examples. I'll just back uh, to them, you know, art versus science, vision versus mission, today versus tomorrow, audience versus value, speed versus direction, uh, profit versus freedom. You know, what is it that ultimately you need to try to balance here? And then we need to expand this a little bit. I'm going to be going into this in, in quite a bit more detail, but that fulcrum, right? What factors are critical to your overall business capabilities? So if you've got a minute, you know, either throw them in the chat or just quickly scribble them down on a piece of paper. 
because this is going to set up your foundation for where you can actually leverage the strategy, how you can actually create it as well. So again, this is your fulcrum here. And what I said was important, and I'm going to show you how these actually fit was, do we have clarity? Do we have certainty? And do we have competency as our main fulcrum? So what is it, you know, that you're trying to balance? And then what are the factors that are critical to your business? So what is that, that fulcrum that you're actually able to create as well? So here's, here's the worksheet that you can then kind of put it in place as well. And you can use this, you can screenshot it, do whatever you want. I, I do have uh, one of the gifts that I want to give you at the end is where you can actually build this uh, for yourself, the model that I'm going to show you as well. But just, you know, scratch it out on a piece of paper now to get started. Uh, but what are the two factors that you want to balance? And then how is that fulcrum built? And look, if you want, just use the existing one that, that we've created. This is part of the, the strategy, the AMPS model, which I'll get into very, very shortly. So this is the fulcrum to keep it in balance. So again, clarity, certainty, and competency. And in this case, the balance, the sorry, the example I used was speed or direction. So we have to be able to balance these. And this is how we create the leverage is once we're able to see this, then we can actually identify it and we can actually use it and leverage it. And that's the key ingredient here. So this is what I call the audience method process and story model or the AMPS model. And what it does is it combines four of these fulcrums that we talked about of change and of reinvention. And why four? Well, because four can actually create more leverage. And if we look at change uh, over time, if we can actually distribute it into smaller micro amounts of change, those changes become actually a lot easier. So that's what we need to be able to look at. So let's go deeper. You may have seen this diagram or a similar diagram. It's like, hey, how many triangles can you see? So I'd love to hear, again, I can't actually see it in the chat, but I'd love to, how many do you see here? How many triangles do you see? And I'm going to give you the answer coming up, but I just love, you know, quickly, what do you think? How many triangles do you actually see? So by having a visual model of these fulcrums, we can actually see and we can describe what we're seeing and what we want to be able to describe as well. So, you know, what if, what if each triangle was a fulcrum, a way of seeing and creating these changes, right? What if we can make smaller changes amongst the larger changes to make it easier? As I pointed out, a lot of us, when we're thinking about change or we're thinking about doing something, we take this huge bite, we take this huge chunk and guess what? Nine times out of 10, it not actually work. Why? Because we took too big of a bite. So if we can make micro changes. We can, if we can divide that big change up into four specific components, in this case, we're actually much more able to, to complete. So what if we could stack and integrate all these micro fulcrums and levers into one single model and mode of change? Would, would that be easier? Like, let me ask you that. Would it be easier if you took your big problem and you, you sectioned it down into four smaller problems? I would say 100% absolutely you're, you're just, if you can actually see it in smaller pieces as well. And what if this was your, you know, your new strategy stack that you can actually see, and I'm going to show you how you can actually touch it as well. So as I mentioned, the, the, the cycles of business have increased uh, or shortened rather from the last hundred years. We have to decide when we need to exhibit this change, when we need to execute this change. Cause if we don't, if we don't, anticipate it then we're going to miss it so what if we actually are able to use each of these fulcrums over that course of change to actually make this as part of our roadmap as part of our flight plan this is how we can actually stack these changes and this is actually what's really exciting um actually before i go back there's actually six triangles and if you're not sure why i'm going to show you as i get into this we don't have a lot of time to go through a lot of a lot of this but if you download the 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 worksheets um, that are coming up really soon, uh, you'll be able to kind of use these and you'll be able to see how they fit. But I just want to quickly explain the model to show you that, hey, this is how we can actually make things a lot easier. So we have four four elements here, the audience, the method, and the process and the story. And each of these are our fulcrums, right? So we can focus on our fulcrum of audience. We can focus on our fulcrum of method and process and story, and we can break this problem down into how do we grow business? How do we scale our business? You know, how do we deal with the, the economy? How do we deal with, you know, the, the structure of, of, um, 
the economic factors and that sort of thing as well. So we can actually go through all of these individually. So audience, we need to be able to look at, we need to be able to look at our method, we need to be able to look at our process, we need to be able to look at our story as well. And if we can see these problems in a much larger perspective, so now let's scan out. So we talked about four, one, two, three, four. This is number five, fulcrum number five. This is what I showed you at the beginning, right? We want to look at certainty, clarity, and competency. So we have these integrated, these stacked fulcrums that we can actually use progressively for solving. And then on the inside, this is number six. This is what we call our content map. So this becomes the structure of what are you going to talk about? What is your media? What is your social media? What are you actually engaging with your audience and that sort of thing? So it becomes, again, an integrated stack of your strategy, which is the really exciting and easy part. So here's a quick little homework exercise as well. And again, if you can screenshot this or print it out or just, you know, on a piece of paper, scratch out these four triangles encompassed into one larger triangle. For starters, just use what we've got here, what we built the model on, the audience, right? How are you connecting and community, communicating, rather, uh, your method? What is your internal structure to connect? What are your checklists? You know, what is your, your inherent understanding? Uh, three is your process, right? What steps are critical to succeed, okay? And then number four, what is your story and what journey are you bringing your audience on? And again, we have to remember that we're always bringing our audience on the journey not the other way around. So how do we elevate with our problem solving? So we we kind of, I showed you how does it look as a two-dimensional model back here. And this is something fun if you print this out. Um, and then you can actually cut around this, this uh, the actual shapes. You can actually add tabs to it. And what that actually does is creates the opportunity to be able to take the model that we've we've created here audience method process and story and with the tabs we can actually fold it up and we can create it into a, what's called a tetrahedron right so it's a simple shape but what we're now able to do is to give it that extra depth of problem solving so not only have we created a stack of strategy we created one that you can actually touch and see and feel and you can pass it to your teammates you can pass it to your audience you can pass it to your customers you name it and you can all see how does it work how does it interact what's important and as i'm going to show you in a few minutes how can you actually prioritize this as well so it's a really cre uh, um, a cool ingredients that you can actually put together one for yourself as well so screenshot that, print these and create your own as well. And I do have this as a gift and I'm going to give you the link coming up, but there's two A3 sized uh, worksheets that you'll be able to, to see the model, okay, on the one side and then flip on on the other side and that becomes an A4 model that you can either use on your own, you can create your own, or you can use the existing AMPS as well. And sometimes that's the easiest way to start is just use the model for what we have and see how to how it actually applies to you as well. There's a series of questions here that you can go through also that will really help you align these issues about the audience, about your method, about your process, your story uh, as well. So it really gets down and deep into how you can actually solve problems to this. So if you want to grab a copy of the workbook, you can go to um, um, bit.ly slash startup grind worksheets and you'll get the two uh, PDFs uh, for free and you can just print them out. I recommend printing them out on A3 um, and then you can actually cut it to size so you, do, you will have the actual final uh, sized uh, tetrahedron as well. So um, if you don't want to type it in, just point your phone and uh, it'll go right to the shop. And if you, you do need to enter the code startup grind as well, and it'll be uh, a free download for you also from the strategy storming store. So creative problem solving requires divergent thinking to get convergent solutions. And this is really important. This is where the, the rubber hits the road, quite honestly. Divergent thinking is building a model like this, okay? Because you, you have to, you're forcing yourself to be creative. That's not necessarily a good, good expression, but you're, you're saying there's more to the solution. How do we actually find other parts to this? Now we need to bring it back in and say, okay, we've got a great model. We have a great understanding of the strategy behind it. We know what's important. How do we actually execute? 
right? How do, how do we make this conversion and say, here's our solution to it? And that's what gives you re leverage rather. And how do we do that? What, what I call the 100 day radar, you know, where are we headed? What can you see? Uh, one of the, the problems I often see is you wouldn't go to an airport without knowing where you're going or what flight you're on. So why do we do that in our businesses, right? We don't always know where we're going with our business and or where we're actually taking our audience. And when your audience, your customers see that, uh, they'll go with somebody who actually knows where they're going as well. So radar helps you to see what's close versus far, what's off course, you know, what's a priority now versus later, where are the obstacles, where are the challenges, where are you going, what direction, what elevation, what speed, right? Without radar, we wouldn't have a functioning transportation hub because we wouldn't be able to see what's in the way. And if we can apply that to our business, we'll be much better off because then we know what a priority is. So we can see, you know, what can we control directly? What can we influence? What is outside of our control? We can build a radar. We can build a roadmap that allows us to see what's important now and tomorrow and prioritize it. Remember at the beginning, we talked about, you know, today versus tomorrow. This is one of the most profound tools that allow you to be able to do that because you can anticipate what's coming tomorrow with the flight plan, with your radar as well. And all we're doing is we're taking the model, right? We're taking the model that we built. And again, you can use this specific one or you can customize it on your own uh, with those worksheets as well. And we're splitting it up. We're taking all of these sub elements around audience and prioritizing them. One, two, three, one, one, two, three. And then we take the method and we place the method and we put all the activities here for the method. And then we move to the process and we put all the priorities of the process. And then finally, we put all the three priorities, one, two, three of the story as well. And look, it doesn't have to be in specific order. You can mix and match, but this is the easiest way to start. Start with your audience, move to your method, move to your process, and then your story all within a hundred days, a hundred day radar. And that gives you a great opportunity to, to test and to experiment and to see what's going to work. And you're developing a very clear objective of what you want to be able to do. So just about ready to wrap up. And one of the things that I like to talk about is one degree of artfulness. And what is, you know, one degree off course? Because oftentimes we, you know, as, as a startup or as a mature business, we kind of think we're going in one direction and, and guess what, where we are, but we're kind of getting pushed and the winds are blowing and the road might be a little bit crooked. And, you know, there's all these extra factors that are pushing against us uh, to be successful and that sort of thing. So we need to be able to understand what happens. So there's a rule of thumb in, in the aviation world. That's, that's the, the 60 to one rule. So basically one degree off course how far would you be along if you actually continued to follow that one degree? So over time, you can imagine one degree can look a lot different uh, from the beginning, right? One degree is like that, but at the end of the journey, it's huge. So for every 60 nautical miles, kilometers, it doesn't really matter that you move forward. If you're one degree off, you're going to be one kilometer off of your target. Okay. So if you're traveling pretty you know, some, some short distance, um, sorry, it's getting late. My voice is getting a little, um, coarse, but if, if you're traveling short distances, 60 kilometer, one degree off, okay. You look down and it's a kilometer off. So you can easily correct and get back to the, the runway or whatever the case may be. That that's, that's pretty easy. But if you're traveling from Sydney to London, right, that's huge distance. If you're traveling from Perth to Canada, right you know, 5,000, 10,000 kilometers. So you're, if you're one degree off, guess what? You're not going to actually land in Sydney. If you're coming from London, you're going to miss Sydney. You might actually land in Perth <laughs> and you're welcome to come say hi. But the point is, is that you're not where you want it to be. And ultimately you have to be where you want to be. Otherwise there's no point in doing the business as well. So we need to be able to understand that so we can see, okay, if we're off course, if, if strategy is not dynamic, it's going to push us off course. But if our strategy is dynamic, that allows us to be able to correct and to be able to adjust, but we need to know exactly what we're correcting and adjusting to. And that's what the model does for you. 
Otherwise, like I said, you're not going to land where you want to be at the end of the day. So a lot of us are operating in this long cycle, right? We're expecting business to last a long time that we don't have to change. We don't have to, to adjust. Guess what? You're incorrect. Um, we need to be able to see that every three and a half years, we have to reimagine how we actually are approaching our market and what we need to be able to change to be more effective at it and to grow and scale the business as well. Most of us are fighting fires and most of us are moving deck chairs on the Titanic, unfortunately, as well. So fear is not the enemy. Strategy storming is giving you exactly how to get there, what you need, when to prioritize, how to be on target with your transformation as well. So how do you use strategy storming? The next steps in your transformation toolbox, as I showed you, it's a pretty simple model. It's easy to remember. You got four parts, four levers, four, four, sorry, four fulcrums that allow you to be able to create that leverage. Look at how you can actually apply these. And again, if you go through those questionnaires, uh, I've got the link coming up again. Uh, so get your camera ready uh, and it'll take you right there. But if you use these four pieces, if you use these four fulcrums, it'll create that certainty. It'll create that understanding. It'll create that clarity as well. So anyone can start a business, but who can finish one, right? Ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to start, but we also want to finish as well. And if finish means selling, if finish means, you know, moving on or whatever, then that's great. But how do we get that business to the best point possible. So we need to be able to understand what's stopping us. We need to be able to create a clear strategy to get us there. And we need to be able to build a model that allows us to scale as well. We've solved it, right? The battle is not between leads, profit and value. It's always between today and tomorrow. So find your balance, your levers, your fulcrum and thinking of with thinking and creativity. And that's the art strategy summary. And that's the leverage that we want to be able to as well. So how do you leverage strategy storming? Define where you are today versus tomorrow. And you again, make sure that you're working with both, not sacrificing one for the other, identifying your blonde blind spots and biases, right? That, that airplane we talked about, the bullet holes, where are you putting that armor plating on? Where are you not? I see what your fulcrums are and what you need to balance and leverage. And you can use the amps model, or you can use, you know, that, that shape as well, uh, to be able to to dive in and go deep on what's really important to your business. Use your radar to see what me, might be coming and how to prepare and then test it out and experiment as well with your 100 day uh, radar uh, flight plan as well and put on your lab coat, but that's for another day as well. <laughs> so quickly, just to fin finish up here, uh, if you want the A3 uh, PDF that you can um, download and print, go to that link or or scan your camera and on that QR, QR code and make sure you enter the startup grind. This link does take you there, but if you get distracted, just enter startup grind as the code and it'll you'll be able to download it for free. All right, and that's all Thank I have. You. So, yeah. Amazing. Thank you very much, Doyle. I'll, I also grabbed the link from you and I'll share in the follow up email with everyone. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, that that was amazing. Uh, we do have a couple of questions and I'll start with one from the participants, Kate Dames. Regarding the first degree of artfulness, what are some good strategies and tools to ensure that you get feedback? And is there a line back to the model to ensure that you keep everything in mind at all times? That's um, the question in the Q&A. What was, sorry, what was the first question, the first part of that question? Yes. What are some uh, what are some good strategies and tools to ensure that you get feedback regarding the first degree artfulness? If if I understand correctly, the the first the first part of this whole model is is asking your customer, right? It's asking your audience what exactly are they looking for? What are they? What are you trying to? Um, what journey are you trying to take them on? A lot of times we don't feel that we're sort of taking them on a journey. But as I pointed out, we need to be able to define what is, where are we taking them? If they're coming to our airport or going on our flight, where is it that we're taking them to? Okay, so they need to know that. So you have to be very clear. So ask them. The simple question, yes, just ask them, whether it's in, through an email, whether it's through social media, whether it's creating like a um, an online event or whatever the case may be, ask and see, see what they say as well. So that's the best strategy is, is pointing it out first to say, okay, let's get that answer. Um, and then 
honestly putting it into this model to be able to to show you okay well this is how they interact i have to be able to have my audience attached to my process and, and my method and my story as well right so i can take this model and and rearrange it but at the same time focusing on what is important at that specific point in time and the the second part of the question is there a line back to the model to ensure that you keep everything in mind at all times? By building that that roadmap that I spoke of early, and, and using it um, in a in a finite timeline. So I, I say a hundred day radar, right? So that gives you the opportunity to be able to say, okay, let's try this. Let's ex run an experiment for a hundred days and see, and we can actually go through all the different four different elements. Um, as well throughout that 100 days, so you can run an experiment on the entire process. Or if you want to move it out, do 100 days for process audience, you know, story 100 days for each one of these as well. So you can actually, it's meant to gamify it a little bit to say, okay, what do we want to focus on? What's our priority um, for this 100 day plan? Um, whatever the case may be, and then move on from there. Thank you. Um, do we have an, any more questions from the audience? There's been a lot during the session. I mean, a lot to take, so it's probably everyone's still processing. Um, okay, well, um, Doyle, so just my last question from me. So um, we know that startups evolve, they test, they then pivot, then they test again very often, you know, then they scale. So what is your advice for approaching this as a founder who wants to ensure that they stay true to their brand value while on the transformation journey? Um, I, I would say, and it's something that we often overlook, honestly, we're all very skilled and, and entrepreneurs are very, very skilled at what they do. But a lot of times we, we kind of assume that we know the right answer or we know the right direction that we're going in. So all I'm suggesting is that, you know, just take a step back and say, what if, you know, I outline this, what if I, I put in place again, a, you know, a fun little model like this to be able to guide me, right? It's no different than creating a, a GPS um, or starting not creating a GPS, but using a GPS, right? If you go into a new city like me here in Sydney, like I'm, yeah, I'm using the GPS. Um, so you punch it in and it takes you there and, and you don't really see much what's going on and, and that sort of thing. And as you go a couple more times, you might look around, you might notice some landmarks. And then by the third or fourth time, you could probably get there without actually using the GPS. So all I'm suggesting is build a model that allows you to be able to, to do that, to understand what are the challenges, what are the problems that you're going to encounter, run some experiments to be able to verify that. And then over time, guess what? You might not necessarily need your model, but at least you, you have an understanding that I can always go back to it and I can always go and see, okay, well, this is what we decided. This was our, you know, our hundred day radar for quarter number one or quarter number two or whatever. So I can always refer to it. And to me, that's ultimately what's important here is do we have the tools to be able to, to look back on, but also to look forward on to as well. Yeah. No, thank you. I, I keep looking at comments and actually, you know, people, people are saying it was brilliant. No, excellent. Lots of notes taken. Well, worth getting up at 3.45 AM. Where oh, wow, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Perry, that would be where like are uh, you? San Francisco. That would be like Pacific Pacific time on the West Coast, I think. Yeah, somewhere, yeah. somewhere very far away, and yes, um, really, yeah. really very good start of the day. <laughs> Probably the whole day then working on a strategy. <laughs> um, yeah, well, and but take take the time, and and I know that's one of the things that we that we sacrifice every day is we're we're so busy. Doing in the to-do list um, but if we just take a little bit a little slice out of our day that helps keep us on direction and that helps us anticipate tomorrow and ultimately that that's what we really want to be able to do here and this is a tool that can actually allow you to do that to see where it is that you are right now yeah Yes. As, as startup founders, it's it's always hard work, and yes, you have to yeah. juggle so much. And uh, I think the most important thing is is actually working on that strategy, and not forgetting because we are juggling. Um, that's yeah. that's the key thing. Well, it's yeah. been absolutely 
thought-provoking, useful, lots of content, and I'm sure for everyone joining today. So, so I'm really glad that uh, that uh, we can also read how useful that was. Uh, Doyle, really appreciate uh, you giving us that uh, that time in the in the evening. It's it's probably um, around 10 p.m. right now in Sydney. Yeah, that's okay. So, so very very useful. Um, for anyone who'd like to connect with you, reach out. Um, we will we'll share the, the details if they have any specific questions. And obviously, I'll also share the link. Well, um, last, last thing for me, because that's the last event uh, before we you right, know, yeah. go for, for Christmas holidays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if, if anyone is celebrating, have a wonderful <laughs> Christmas. Uh, have a great time with the family. And uh, well, we are looking forward to meeting everyone in 2023. Yeah, no, thank you so much for the opportunity, Patricia. Really appreciate it. And thanks for everybody. And if you feel, uh, please feel free to reach out uh, on LinkedIn if you have any questions. Um, if you download the the PDFs as well and, and need a hand with it, please just reach out and happy to, to help guide you along the way, so. Yeah. Yeah, we will also upload the, the whole webinar on the on YouTube channel and share with everyone. So so you can rewatch and uh, um, you know do do all the exercises, do some thinking. Over Christmas we'll have more time. So thank yeah, you very yeah. much, everyone, once again. Doyle, have a lovely, great night. Uh, you you know you, you need some rest after after the very very busy i, I almost <laughs> forgot to put on my my <laughs> my glasses too these are my 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 bs glasses <laughs> and where, <laughs> where is your lab coat <laughs> last time we had the lab coat <laughs> yeah i'll get so that's that. another story so we'll, yeah. we'll have to do that presentation in in 2023 <laughs> well i i hope we'll meet again well, thank you very yeah. much once again, everyone. Have a good night or have a good day. And uh, I'll see you back in 2023. Thank you. Cheers.